Hey everybody, it's Dr. Galvin, and we're going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to do a little tutorial, and what are we going to learn? We're going to learn how to do our own fact-checking. I'm always talking about people to, uh, to do your own research, don't believe what I tell you. And I thought I'd take you through my process that I use when I'm sent either an article or a video or something like that that I want to figure out whether what is being said is true or not. And so I'm going to use this um, this video call, I think it's called COVID-19 and blood clots that quite a few of you have sent me. And it's a great example because it's chock full of, of misinformation and, and, and just falsehoods. And it's a good, good uh, tool for us to use to kind of go through my process. And so I, I don't you know, really know who put out this video um, because it's not really identified. But I think what we should do is we'll start by let's just watch part of the video and we'll, we'll see what we think. We'll watch the first couple seconds of it. And so here it goes. It starts out. And blood clots. In so. Italy, the cure for coronavirus is finally found. Italian awesome. doctors disobeyed the World Health Law WHO not Bad to doctors. do autopsies on the dead of the coronavirus and they found that it is not a virus but a bacteria that causes death. Hmm. This causes blood clots to form and causes the death mm -hmm. of the patient. Italy defeats the so-called COVID-19, which is nothing other than December. Huh, interesting. Okay, so according to them, well, that it's not caused, COVID-19 is not caused by a virus, it's caused by a bacteria that causes blood clots and then causes something called DIC. Now, where do we start? Well, I mean, the obvious first thing is the voice, right? Let's listen to the voice again. Nated intravascular coagulation, thrombosis. And the way to combat it, that is, it's cure. I don't think they paid a high price actor to voice this over, right? That's a computer generated voice. So. Here we've got a video, and if you notice, there was no attribution at the beginning. It doesn't say who produced it, where the information sources are. So there's our first clue that something's amiss. We've got a computer-generated voice and no real information. Well, you know, they make this claim that it's a the it's a not a virus but a bacterium. So my first step is to go to someplace like PubMed. Now, PubMed is a repository of scientific literature. So basically any published study that's been done probably going back 100 plus years um, is stored here. So you can search here for papers on any topic whatsoever. So we go to PubMed, it's a public source. There's other things called Medline and other things that we have access to in the hospital that are similar to this. But PubMed, PubMed is open to anybody, so you can go and do it. And so I'm just gonna type in coronavirus COVID-19 and let's just see what pops up. And um, so we've got the epidemiology and pathogenesis of coronavirus disease, COVID uh, recent trends, current status of epidemiology. And if you go through and read through these, they will all basically break down the science of the etiology of the disease. And I went and read through a bunch of these. And indeed, they, they characterize it as a virus. And then each one of those papers has multiple references to the papers that show the structure of the virus and who discovered that it was actually a virus and not a bacteria. So there are, are literally hundreds and hundreds of patient, uh, papers here with many, many, many references to other patient papers that show that, that, that it's definitely COVID-19 is caused by a virus, not a bacteria. So we've got some good science to look at um, that. Now, this is pretty dry stuff. It's fairly complicated. You may not want to dig through a bunch of studies and try to figure out what they mean. Are there other you know, ways to do it? Well, there are actually fact-checking um, organizations out there that are actually pretty good. Now, I've mentioned these before and people have given me all kinds of grief about, you know, they're corrupt and they're, they're owned by these media companies. Well, I think you can, you can do your own homework. And I think a good one to look at is factcheck.org. And they have a whole pay, you know, factcheck.org is um, a project of the Annenberg Public Policy Center. So it's funded by a grant from the Annenberg Foundation. And they have an entire page that talks about where their funding comes from. And they're completely transparent that they got, you know, where their money comes from. Um, and you know who who their donors are, and also whether they're beholden to those donors or not. And you can look through it yourself. And um, you know, I think, and they also, uh, interestingly enough, you can see that they've been um, rated very highly by um, 
uh, one of the a couple of the organizations that rank nonprofits in terms of the cleanness of their money and, and their trueness to their, their mission. And their mission is fact checking. And there are other places that are similar that also have clean funding. So you can use those organizations as a shortcut and you know they provide good references to where they're getting their information from. So those are things that we need to look at. So the next thing is, you know, the claim that it's not a virus, it's a bacteria. We've sort of debunked that. But the next claim was that it, the World Health Organization told, you know, the Italians that they couldn't do autopsies on these bodies. You know, we do autopsies when someone dies to figure out why they died. And if you do a little bit of digging in that, there's no such directive from the World Health Organization to not do autopsies. As a matter of fact, that there's actually directives from the World Health Organization on how to do autopsies on people that die of COVID-19. Um, and that really has to do with taking extra precautions. And it was actually the Italian government that asked their pathologists to limit the number of autopsies done on these patients because they found that a few pathologists actually came down with a virus because the, uh, the sterile techniques they were using were not effective. But they were never barred from doing autopsies and that's easily disproven. The next thing they say is that it's um, you know only DIC. Now what's DIC? Disseminated intravascular coagulation. DIC is a very, very, very bad thing. And it happens when people get either overwhelming sepsis and overwhelming infection, or um, sometimes a, 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 something like a, a amniotic fluid embolus or something like that. And what, what occurs is the clotting cascade gets activated generally in the body. So not just at the site of an injury, but everywhere. And you start developing these thrombi throughout the body and these, they start blocking up blood vessels and it starts causing damage. And then quickly you exhaust all of your clotting factors and then people start bleeding. So, um, you know, one of the things that gets exhausted is platelets. And so when people go into DIC, not only are they critically ill in the intensive care unit, but the treatment is typically platelet transfusions and fresh frozen plasma and cryoprecipitate, which are all these factors that get destroyed in DIC. And aspirin is an antiplatelet agent, and you certainly would not want to give aspirin to somebody who's in fluoride DIC. You'd kill them. So that's um, another thing. And you can see, like here, this next part of the video. That, it, that is, its cure is with the antibiotics, anti-inflammatories, and anticoagulants. Aspirin, indicating that this disease had been poorly treated. So you know, aspirin, like we just said, is it would would probably kill the patient. So not a very good piece of advice. So they go on and on, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna fast forward through the video just a little bit. But I think the next thing we want to look at um, is some of the grammar in the video. Um, so um, I think this part uh, I'm just gonna read it, or I'll let her read it. And lifted by the WHO, this cure already knew and did not inform the Chinese for doing business. Cure already knew, did not inform the Chinese for doing business. Hmm. I don't know. I don't understand that, but this is my favorite part of the whole video, I think. Share that the whole world knows that we have been deceived and murdered by our elderly people. We've been deceived and murdered by our elderly people. Hmm. Well, that's an interesting claim. And I think that we all probably can, at this point, understand that this video is, you know, you know, is nonsense. And, you know, but I, you know, at the same time, I probably was sent this video over a dozen times by people asking me, you know, is this true? Um, and again, I, I go through the same process, whether it's an article, whether it's a video, and, you know, because I don't know if any of these things are true or not. And so I try to go through the stepwise thing, check the science, check other sources, check the veracity of who's producing it, because usually it comes out from somebody. This one, they didn't even go to the trouble of trying to claim it was put out by anybody in particular. It's not attributed, there doesn't, you don't know where it came from. So this one was particularly easy to disprove, but this is the process that you go through. And you know, use this, and it doesn't only work for science, folks. It, you know, it works for anything that you're being told by the media that you're not sure about. You know, go and fact check it on your own. Um, and this is the way I do it for scientific related things, for political things and, and social things. There are other sources to go to that you try to can get um, unbiased information. The other thing I do for, for social and political things is I try to go to 
the sources on either side. So if it's if it's a political thing, I try to go to the far left websites and the far right websites and try to by looking at those two and then looking at some of the other media, try to figure out where the middle ground is, because as we all know, the truth lies in the middle. It rarely lies at the extremes. So that's it for this video. If you found this useful, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, like us on Facebook. You can look um, at our YouTube channel. There's lots of content there about uh, the virus and also quite a bit of content that we're adding about our about wellness, hormone health, nutrition, fitness, sleep, stress, all kinds of things to make you live better and longer lives. I'll be back uh, with more videos soon. Have a great evening. Thank you.